Hey everyone, my name is Val and I've been living with type 1 diabetes for seven years. And I'm Will and I've been living with type 1 diabetes for eight years. And we're super excited today to be chatting with Dr. Jeremy Pettis and also Dr. Steve Edelman, who also live with type 1 diabetes. And we're gonna talk and ask some questions about diabetes. So in the last few years, it seems that there's been like a lot of technology coming out and up and coming in the last couple of years. We wanted to ask you like, how do we find out like what works for us in our lifestyle? And also what do we have access to? Like what is out there? Well, the first step is getting knowledgeable about the technology at the foundation, CGM, CGM and CGM. And most young folks like to be untethered and not have anything on their body. So they use multiple daily injections with a CGM. You could use a smart pen to help manage and keep track of your doses and things like that. And then on the other end of the spectrum, these hybrid closed loop systems with automatic insulin delivery, we have four systems now. So I think you have to find out what your needs are, learn the different technology and pick the one that appeals to you the most. How do you recommend people determine like how diabetes tech can fit into their lifestyle? Yeah, I would say for them just to literally try it. You know, for a CGM, I really recommend that all the type ones go on to it um, because it just it offers things you just can't do with, with, with poking your finger. But for pumps, a lot of times people feel like they're gonna be locked into it. But a lot of the companies will like have opportunities to literally try it for a month and then just see and make that choice. And you, you don't, it doesn't have to be this big nebulous, like lifelong decision. Just try it, see if it works with your lifestyle. And if it doesn't, that's okay. But if it does, fantastic. I know from my own experience and a lot of others, um, we sometimes can get a lot of like tech burnout and alarm fatigue and things like that. So how do you recommend people address tech burnout? And is it possible to take a break from diabetes tech? I think, I think all of us type ones get frustrated and burn out with technology, some sooner than others. And so I think it's just important to really recognize what bothers you the most. And if it bothers you on day-to-day -day basis, week-to-week -week basis, then it's time to take a break. And go on MDI, and I think having your CGM on board, the alarm's a little higher <laughs> so that they don't bug you as much. Uh, and there's a thing called the untethered regimen. You have to a way of going off your pump for a short period of time, but still being able to enjoy the, the ease of good control. Yeah, I'll just add on that, you know, right now I'm actually on shots and most of the time I've been on a pump. And I think a lot of type ones especially can feel like they're a bad diabetic if they're not using their pump in the latest and the greatest, but all this stuff is designed to make your life easier. And if you find that it isn't, you can either take a break from it or change your regimen completely. But at the end of the day, if you're getting good control and good results, then it is working for you and that's totally fine. What about for you guys? How do you deal with tech burnout? I definitely like look at the burnout time as like a time to zoom out. So this isn't when I'm like zooming in, like trying to look at all my baselines and just like getting really tight with management. It's more so like zooming out. So for me, sometimes that looks like changing like the width of like my range right like making it wider so maybe i'm not hearing as many alerts or even if it's just like during the day i feel burnt out because i feel like burnout can be like hour to hour day to day i'll just put my phone on silent just for a little bit to have that break and like peace of mind um, but i'd say like adjusting those things usually makes me feel better but also giving over that hump like you said of like it's okay to use other things you don't have to always be on your pump you can do mdi you can do I mean, the other day I was honestly using a syringe because I just had to go old school for a little bit just because my pump broke, but it actually felt really good to like be in control that way. And that made me feel fine. It was like a little break. Yeah, the only thing I want to say too is it happens to all of us. I mean, Steve and I are endocrinologists and we know a lot about this disease, have access to everything. Um, and it still makes us angry. Okay, so I know that technology is designed to like make our lives easier, like the day-to-day -day tasks, but what about like beyond that, like travel, visiting people, going to college, sitting in an exam, like where does technology fit into that and what does that really look like? Well, the ultimate technology in this day and age is hybrid closed loop system with automatic insulin delivery, five different systems. And no matter if you're taking an exam or on a holiday, you want to be 
in range because when you're out of range, it wrecks your vacation, it wrecks your exam. So these devices that you see, GM, that could, once you have your settings set, you know, your sensitivity factor, your insulin to carb, your basal rate, uh, you know, and your alerts and alarms are set correctly, it could make life so much easier no matter what you're doing. And that's the beauty of technology. Yeah, I'd say for me, CGM, like beyond blood sugars, is really a feeling of safety and, and knowledge. So one, you know, just being alerted when your blood sugars are out of range. I mean, how many times before having CGM would I wake up in the morning, check my blood sugar and literally like close my eyes because I didn't know, know what my blood sugar would be. And is it gonna be 300 or is it gonna be, you know, 30? Like, you know, it can be anywhere. Mm -hmm. So kind of knowing where it's, where it's been, where it's going, feeling safe is so great. And then with the hybrid closed loop, yeah, all the blood sugar improvement, but it's really sleep. That is the one thing that I think has been like the additional benefit of less alarms and less highs and lows at night. That's where these systems like really excel. And especially as a college kid, young adult, that's so important that I can go to bed um, and pretty much wherever my blood sugar is, by the time I wake up, it'll be in a good range. And gosh, it's so nice to wake up with a good blood sugar because your day is just gonna be better. So we know that there are a lot of young adults who may not have access to this technology for a lot of just at different external reasons, be it, you know, their geography, the knowledge of their provider, access and finances, insurance, etc. What are some of those barriers and ways that you would recommend that young adults navigate around them if they want to access this technology? Yeah, so the first thing is find a good provider, somebody who really specializes in type 1 diabetes. A lot of times people don't know this, that endocrinology is a very broad field. We're doing bone disease, pituitary disease, and there's only a fraction of endocrinologists that specialize in diabetes, and even a sub-fraction that specialize in type 1 diabetes. So asking around, getting like, you know, who's the person to see? And a benefit of COVID is that we do a lot of virtual medicine now. So you literally can see anybody in your state virtually, so that should give people access to kind of somebody who at least knows these technologies. Because the thing I can't stand is when providers don't offer it to people. At least offer it to people and let them make the decision. Um, and then beyond that, it really comes down to insurance. But thankfully that's getting a lot better. When CGM kind of first started, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, it was like almost impossible mm -hmm. for people to get CGM. It was very difficult. Mm -hmm. Now Medicare is covering it for type twos and things like that. So that's becoming less of a barrier, um, thankfully. But if for some reason there's another insurance you know, barrier, there are some other free programs that people can look into in student health, et cetera. So we're just hoping that these barriers just continue to go away so that people can get the stuff that they want to be on. There's a lot of other social determinants of health too, whether you have access to a car, transportation, do you have insurance? Can you pay for some of the technology we're talking about? So as Jeremy said, you gotta look around and look for resources and get smart, you know, go to Diabetes Link, go to TCOID, and I think knowledge is the first step, and then that'll help you communicate better with a provider that you do find. Did you guys share an experience where you faced like a challenge with diabetes technology and how you overcame it? Yes. <laughs> like this just happened to me the other day. So I'm on the tandem pump and I woke up in the morning. I was running out of insulin in my cartridge. So I filled a new cartridge, got a whole new site going, got everything set up, ready to go. But the cartridge like wasn't being accepted. It wasn't like working. So I kept getting like a prompt saying like, your cartridge like there's an error and I kept getting it and I tried another cartridge and at that point I'm like okay I just filled up two cartridges with so much insulin I'm losing all this insulin it's not working and in that moment I was like okay like you know you depend so much on the pump or like whatever system that you're on and you're expecting that's going to work and maybe when you try the second time it's still going to work it didn't so that you know in that moment I was like okay do I have plan b with me right I'm running to the garage do I have syringes do I have needles do I have pins in the fridge do I have any like do I have a plan b in place and so, you know, with that, there's other challenges, right? Like, how do I get a new pump? Like, do I need to call my doctor? Do I need a new prescription? So, yeah, that just happened to me. And it was definitely um, a situation I haven't been in in a while. So it really, like, shook me up and I was definitely upset. Yeah, I think that's such a great story because it happens to all of us. And for me, it's inevitably when I'm, like, halfway across the country or always. traveling <laughs> and it's like, or you're in the middle of the most important work meeting in your life. It always happens like at the worst time. So <laughs> we just have to realize that these things are going to happen, that we generally agree this technology is beneficial. That's why we put up with this stuff. But preparing yourself to 
um, kind of expect these things and then be able to triage them when they happen. So it's important to kind of stockpile supplies. Make sure that your prescription for insulin, for example, is at least what you need, and if not more, so you can have some kind of backup supplies. When you go, you know, traveling, you take, you know, two, three times kind of what you think you need. For, you know, glucose tabs and all these other things, have them everywhere, you know, or infusion sets in your, in your bags at work, in your car, all these kinds of things, so that when they do happen, they're not like day-enders. They're like, okay, this is annoying, but thankfully I have my next sensor infusion set right here instead of I have to go home or I have to do like X, Y, or Z. But trust me, they are beyond frustrating. <laughs> and for me, that's when diabetes really drives me nuts. It's when it like you get thrown these curveballs, and it's like, why is my blood sugar high? Why am I 300 after I just you know put in my new pump? And it's like thinking, oh, okay, it's because my infusion site's not working, and you have to kind of like deal with that. So you know, it reminds me that this technology is so good, and there's these situations you know, don't happen that often. And when they happen that infrequently, the less we are prepared. Because it's been a long time since we thought about it. And you know, it's Murphy's, you gotta be prepared for Murphy's Law. When we travel together, I bring extra stuff for me and extra stuff for him, because he's usually calling me up. Hey Steve, do you have an extra sensor?